WEMF Radio Now. WEMF Radio Now. Welcome. We're back. The Young Jerks on WEMF Radio. Dot com. Every week. That's right, every Saturday. 6 p.m. Mm hmm. 2 hey, 7. Yeah, his name is Frank. Frank Capone. <laughs> <laughs> and my name is Mike. My- Mike Ken. There we go. Yep. Finishing each other's sentences. That's right. The slow way. That is correct. That's right. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> we're that show. We just mess with you. We mess with ourselves. That's what we do because we're the young jerks. There's some uh, debate sometimes about whether I can still qualify as a young jerk. Well, I, that's what I was saying, you know, because when we first came up with the name, it was like, <laughs> clearly I'm the young jerk and you're like the middle-aged jerk. Well, compared to like Rush Limbaugh and even Fair like enough. the Hillman, well, a and, young jerk. You know, even like aces like Bradley J out there. You, you know, I'm you, a young jerk. You're right? a well-preserved jerk. Oh, man. <laughs> Come on. We go to the Middle East too. We have this thing. That's uh, we did go to the Middle East. We a couple times now. We asked the bartender, like uh, one one bartender in particular. We were like, we're getting a drink. We're talking about it. We're like, so do 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 we qualify as young jerks? He looks at me and he says. Yeah, you look like a jerk. <laughs> I said, what a young jerk. No, I said, you look like a jerk. I said, all right. But then, then we had another one that yet the, uh, we, last week. We At were, the uh, Battlefield Rally? Yeah. Yep. We, we were VIPs. They already knew who we were, kind of. Uh, well, sort of. You know, they knew we were someone nice. Yeah, we're kind of know. a big deal. Yeah. And uh, they we asked them the same question, and they were like, they were more polite about it. What did they say? They said, well, um... I, I guess you could be a young jerk. <laughs> so and then the, he, he proved himself to me because he jumped on me and knocked my beer yeah, over in the middle like, of the dance floor. Yeah, this guy? And they, everyone's <laughs> like, like, let him in. It's my can. <laughs> so we'll, so take yeah, it, we'll we, give you a young point for that. We'll, we'll take it where we can get it. Absolutely. <laughs> we are, again, the young jerks for now, anyways. That's right. And we're here on WMF Radio. And we have a big week ahead of us here A big, big, big weeks coming up. Big months. Right. Big years. Uh I'm getting into, like, 10-year plans. Yeah, you going full-on communist? No, it's just like, you know, we got the <laughs> one-year plan, the one-week plan. I can't wait over the next week, over the plan next B. months. Just some things that are All happening. All kinds of plans, yeah. That have been announced over the last couple of weeks. What's uh, stuff that we're involved in? What's, what's like, the first thing in the next week? But, yeah, seriously, why not have a 10-year plan? I think, look, look at cannabis, for instance, one issue that we cover all the time Um Chris Farone, he wrote something that just get, it gets right on it. It's something how we met way back, Frank. Yeah. This show is all about weed this week. We're going to take a call, hopefully, from Dan the Man, a little bit from Market Basket, but it's about weed. When I first met you, uh, Frank, you got up on stage and you played a character. You were acting uh, for a campaign at yep. the Boston Freedom Rally, uh, one of the best moments for political speech early on that I had ever seen at the Freedom Rally. And you really carried it off. You did a South Park bit. I was. I was the. Um, I was the. Drugs are bad. The what's his face? There, and drugs uh, are bad. What? The drugs are bad guy from South Park, Mr. Mackey. Yeah. Oh, no, not Mr. Mackey. The 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 drug counselor. Yeah. Uh, the, the whatever. At any rate. Yeah, you did that a satire. Like, it was very well bad, done. Okay. And you, you played know? the part so well. You looked the part. It was amazing. I get to meet you that weekend. We became friends. You know, over a long period of time. Since then, it was fun. It was fun, and that's how we met through the Freedom Rally. You were campaigning for a Republican. I was a political um, campaign. John Cunningham that brought you to the Freedom Rally. But the drugs are bad thing from South Park. Um, it comes back again, like uh, the the coverage that we've been doing, writing in Dig Boston, Blunt Truth, last year. Or so it's been awesome. We're really doing well at it. Meanwhile, um, the rest of the media is just saying. Weed is bad. Yeah, they're still doing the weed is bad, and that's why we're getting so much of a push out of it at Dick Boston and pushing buttons. And you got Chris Verone helping me out with just being my mentor on helping this. Helping Boston out, too. Yeah, he helps yep. out Boston, but just on my column, helping me out yep. and helping us all out. As you said, helping out Boston in all the, all the many issues, but the weed issue specifically. He's been really you know, breaking some of the big stories. When I'm working, I can't be there. He's there. He, he he gets all the good stuff. He knows all about it. He's my editor. He gets it right every week for me. And uh, I love Chris Farone. And he had this statement in Dig Boston that I just love. It was uh, our edit. You know, our pot editorial policy is weed is good. <laughs> and and so we've gone from drugs are bad to weed is good. And I posted that on the Facebook page just to see how people would react, and people loved it because yeah. it's so friggin' true for so many of us. Weed is good. And we've known it the whole time. Yeah. You know, it's everyone else that's just catching up. And it's good for business. It's good to pay me in that that way, too. If you like if you want to do business with me, you want me to, you know, write for you or promote your band. Weed is good. Weed is good. That's a good form of payment. (laughs) 
<laughs> Do you see how we're going with this? Weed is good. I use that all the time. And, and subliminally, I think we were all using that. And Ferone, that's what Ferone does so well. He puts it down on paper. He was the first one, I think, that kind of put those that thought out there about the editorial policy. But I think it relates so well to so much of what we're doing. Weed is good. Yeah. Our weed is good right now, isn't it, Frank? It's Frankie? glorious. What are we doing this uh, next weekend? We're not going to have a show for We're one. not. Actually, yeah, no, we're not going to have a show. and uh, Next Saturday. Next Saturday. Uh, because we are both going to be speakers at the 25th annual Boston. Oh, actually, I'll say it again. Mass Can Mass Normal. Mass Can Normal. Boston Freedom Rally. And this will be my 14th. I did the math the other night. This is my 14th Freedom Rally. So um, I don't know how many I've been to, but it's been a number. 25. Pretty much every <laughs> single one since at least 1999 or something, 2000. Yeah. You know, I start, I've been to every one over the last probably 15 years. Yeah. Like, you know, worked on a good 10 years of them booking a lot of the music and speakers and still even help out with some of the speakers this year. I got Frankie Capone booked on the free. That's right. I, I, That's I, helped, right. I said, you got to put this man on the bill. You got to get. And this you're not guy just up. on one day. No, yeah, both days. You're moving year. up. You're two days. Yep. That, that, I told I you they would, they would see that you're a good speaker, didn't I? Yeah. 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 No, I'm very happy and very excited to be speaking. Um, you know, I was actually a board member for a, a season um, at, at the rally or with Mascan. And uh, helped out at the rally and stuff. So it's cool to from this progression of being like a you know fifteen, sixteen year old kid just there to smoke weed and be in the crowd and not really being big on the activist side. And then you know getting a little bit older and getting more involved with the activism side. And now being on the stage speaking from that same because I re- I remember one of the first years I went with Rick Cusick, you know, and um, actually no that was the year I was on the uh, excuse me on the the board. And Rick Cusick was out there, and he gave this awesome speech about how we have, this is our right, you know, and we demand our rights. And uh, such awesome, awesome, you know, blessing to be able to grace the stage with those same folks that have been working so hard all these years. I know, and that's what I can't wait about this year, especially. It's uh, so many of those people that I I started out the same thing. I was in the crowd. You know, some of the speakers come, you know, they're nationally renowned, they're celebrities coming in. Then there are the speakers like us who are local people. Yeah. And this is what I always never forget my roots and where I come from when I represent. I think this is my wish for so many people that are in that audience f- locally from Boston, checking out the Freedom Rally, checking out Mass Can, checking out uh, the Can Pop, Mike Can, High Times, Normal, seeing what's going on, SSDP, whatever it is that drew you there, the local bands, and then coming out of it, becoming a part of it. That's where I started. I was in the audience with some friends and saying, hey, wouldn't it be cool to get your band on stage as I was starting to book this band? And that was my sole goal. And it turned into, well, not only was I going to book the band, I was going to support this cause and this organization. And I became very involved in the cause and the organization. Next thing I know, I'm I'm running stuff. Yeah, I'm speaking. I'm the, I'm the main focus. I'm one of the main speakers, you know, the, the top. 10 speakers at the rally rally, promoted this year. Amazing. I mean, I can't even freaking believe it where we are right now. And then look at what's going on with Canacon. And like, there's this other thing too, like uh, someone had posted a a flyer that I thought was, you know, really cool about Michael Phelps. And they said, you know, they said, if you, if you smoked weed, you would. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, The meme that they put out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, You would never win the Olympic gold. (laughs) Don't smoke weed. They said, you'll never win eight gold medal. No, you'll never be the most decorated Olympian. They said. Yeah. And isn't that (laughs) how the whole weed thing is for all of us? We don't even have to win an Olympic gold medal to prove that. I'm looking at my own life and other people's lives. It's like, look at Danny Danko or Rick Cusick or any of the, you know, people, Mikey Adams, Mike Shu, uh, Mickey Martin, Keith Droop, Keith, Keith Saunders, yep. Frank Capone, uh, Cara Crab Burnham. We could keep going. Donna, look at all these people. These are uh, great, successful people, right? And they didn't follow this rule. You know, this is a rule that I always grappled with at first. If you come out as an activist for medical or cannabis in any such fashion, then you'll never get a job in the straight world. You'll never get another. You know, it will hurt you in the future for employment. And that's all they really have to hold over a lot of us from coming out. And it doesn't apply. It's In fact, it's just the opposite. Yeah, you might lose some jobs, but you're going to gain a lot more. Yeah. I'm becoming, look at myself, like I'm getting more business from the weed because weed is good. Yeah, and it's better I, to be true to yourself than yeah. it is to, you know, just kind of, oh, well, you know, I support that, but I'm not going to do anything about it because, you know, that might compromise me. And that's what's so good that we're seeing that. Yeah. You know, here's a guy, Jeff Lawrence, who uh, I want to talk about today, too. He's the publisher, the big dog at Dig Boston, right? He's been an activist uh, and a person that supported cannabis for a lot of years. 
Uh, he even worked with Mass Can Normal at some points in the very beginning for a number of years, but he kind of stepped back. I think he probably had a lot of the same, you know, issues that I faced is that sometimes it's, uh, you know, sometimes it can be a burden to be too active, especially with organizations and, and when you have your own things going on. And he's not someone that speaks out a lot. You don't see him, uh, you know, he's just a regular good dude. He's funny. He's got his Facebook page, but uh, you don't see him taking a lot of stances. You don't see him, you know, publicly. He's not a uh, like if public he was, figure. He's yeah, not a, he's public not a big figure. public figure, yeah. even though people know him and either, even though he's got a lot of great friendships. And I and I, you know, respect and, and follow him on Facebook and check him out. And I'm writing for him, but this dig, uh, not not the dig Boston, but it was the uh, Boston Magazine story that came out on the New England Canicon that we've been starting to talk about. Mm-hmm. That I'm involved in with Dick Boston, uh, he came out. Some of the quotes, some of the things he had to say, friggin' amazing. I I just am so excited that the whole thing is even going to happen. Yeah, me you too. Know? And where it's going to happen? It's about time. The castle. It's uh, Park Plaza in Boston. First cannabis convention in you know indoor setting where it's you know everything all out New England Canicon. There's not going to be any smoking probably. Maybe just- some vaping. Yeah, I don't know, Jeff. You saw what Jeff said. He's going to follow the rules. Of course, he's going to do everything right, and uh, it's he's just hard enough to do something in Boston. But you know, and it's not even uh, run by Dig Boston. He's setting up a separate company for this. But that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense, and it and it works, and uh, it's just really exciting to see that story, to see Jeff Lawrence making those statements back in this thing, and to see where we go from here in Boston, because I think there's a lot of big things happening in cannabis, in marijuana right now, in Massachusetts, even though we've been covering for so many months the negative part of it, the DPH, the lack of movement for medical patients. The there's lack still of access a lot of good going yeah. on. We do have a phone call. We've been Ooh. going a little bit long. Maybe we should take a quick phone call. And I imagine the phone call might not be about weed. Well, let's, let's find out. Because we do have N.A. Poe calling in today, maybe in Dan the Man. So maybe for Market Basket, N.A. Poe. Got some weed stuff going on in Philly. Who knows who it is? Who's on the phone? Hello, Kala. Hello, Kala. Can you hear me? Kala, if Hello. you hear me. Hello. Is this Dan the Man? Hey, it's Dan the Man. Hey, Dan the Man. You're a Market Basket employee, right? Correct. Hey. Yeah. Thank you for calling in. Do you hear us talking about weed? What do you think about weed, Dan? Uh, actually, personally, I don't do it myself, so. Do you think Do you think my can should be harassed for using weed for medical reasons? What was that? Do you think I should be harassed for using weed for medical reasons? My, what about my can? You do you think he should be here? You think I should be harassed for using it for medical reasons? Weed. Uh, you put it be good, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. We're putting you on the spot today, Dan, in a different spot. I don't want to get you in trouble at Market Basket. <laughs> of course not. Yeah. Of course not. But because uh, that's what we were doing, we we're doing the weed thing, and I know you're not too uh, you're not too into the other subjects, because I know exactly what you're calling about today. <laughs> What, what you want to start? You want to set this up, Frankie? Because I've been talking a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Have we so, done enough awkwardness? We have, Dan. Uh, I, well, what am I doing to Dan today? We have Dan, the man over <laughs> here, who uh, we have spoke with, and uh, he's Several helped times. us uh, keep us involved in in the in the uh, on the grapevine of what's been going on. It's a celebration today, Basket. Dan. And we get a celebration because the reason uh, why I'm acting so crazy, Dan, because it is a celebration. I'm just cutting off Frank Capone as he's talking. <laughs> We're celebrating. We're celebrating our weed, and we're also celebrating our market basket. Weed is good, and, uh, and market basket is good. And so we're going to transition right now to market basket is good. Do you hear me? I hear you. So, Dan the man, you are back at market basket. Is that is that why you're calling today? You're back working because you had lost your yeah, hours? I, I'm back to work. Let's hear it for Dan the man. man. Very so, nice. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Thank you, Frankie. What is going on at Market Basket? Tell us about you you being back at work at Market Basket. Well, I've been back for the last two weeks, and it's been crazy. We're trying to stock the shelves and get everything set up and ready to go. Um, at my store, I want to say we're about 80% there with stock and stuff. Um, customers are coming in and thanking us employees for what we've done the last six weeks or so. And it just feels great to be back to work. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad that you're back at Market Basket. We went in and shopped, and it was awesome. So it's so good to see that uh, 
after five, six weeks, whatever it was, it was too long, but it finally happened. You know, Dan, I mean, yeah. do, do you have do you have anything to say to all those people that told you to go back to work? Yeah. You know, while this whole thing was going on and figure it out while you were at work? Do you have anything to say to those people? Um, well, about going back to work? Yeah, the yeah people you know, the people that, that were kind of negative, like yeah. during the boycott, they were telling us that they were going to go shop at Market Basket, that, that the employees should get back to work. Oh, so I, so I don't know why some people were negative about about us employees sticking up for our job because there was six weeks that it was going on. Exactly. All so, of you guys stuck together. My theory, you know, my theory is when I was outside picking it on the on the side of the road or stuff, people were coming by and saying that we should get, we should get back to work. But I was like, how can we go back to work? We you know there's nothing there for us to do. That's it. And you guys stuck you it know, out and won. It's not our fault that Felicia and Gooch made off the part timers. It's it's their fault. But you know, once we know we're back in business and it's good, you know, all the customers are happy because they're like, oh, we're so glad you guys are going to go shop at Shaw's or Hannibal's or Walmart and spend much more than I do here. You know, and they're thanking us because you know we stuck our necks out for six weeks because of them. Yeah. Yeah, and the customers did too. I mean, it was just, yeah, it was so obvious you know, that customers were with you. We, what we did for six weeks was, wasn't just for us and for you. It was for the customers and for pretty much everyone else. Telling them to boycott market basket while we, us and for you stick our necks out trying to fight for our jobs and trying to fight to get market basket back. And we did. Yeah, you did. Which is, which is good because you, six weeks is it's too long. It was too long, but you did it. You didn't give up, and, and thank God that you didn't, and thank God that you didn't listen to those idiots out there that were saying those That's stupid right. things. Even I heard a Harvard professor on, uh, radio, yeah. on Boston radio yeah. t- saying, well, you know, these people really should go back to our Even what's like, her name? Uh, the, 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 the reporter, too, from uh, Boston. Uh, uh, it's uh, the new... Oh, oh, the Boston Common? No, nah, it's Boston.com spinoff. It's like beta. Oh, I don't know that Shirley one. Shirley Long. Long? Long? Yeah. Loing? Oh, yeah, like, yeah. She, she's like, oh, the, the employees should go back to work. It's going to be all over soon, like a week before. It's like, no, if they had gone back to work, then they, they, they would have lost. They got nothing. You guys stuck it to the exactly. end. Exactly, and you, you did stuck it right. You un- united with the employees, all, every employee, from management, the warehouse, to the front end, to the laid off workers, to all the customers. It was a united front, and we won, and they couldn't deal with it day after day after day. And it even got depressing for us in here. But you guys stood strong, and you did it. Yeah. And I'm so happy for you, Dan. And then RDT is going around to the stores himself, personally thanking the employees and customers for what they have done for the last six weeks. Yeah, it's awesome to see. It's awesome to see the pictures and the videos, and uh, everyone's wishing that they could be at the store when RDT's there. Every like we like yeah. we we were actually shopping up in uh, one of the market baskets when Artie was in another one in Chelsea. We we're like, why weren't we at that one? Man. Why we missed RDT? <laughs> we could have shook his hand. Just want to rub his head. Yeah. Yeah. Have you gotten to have you gotten to see Adi T? I haven't gotten to see him yet, but I'm waiting for him to show up at my store. Yeah. So I can take pictures and shake his hand personally myself and thank him myself personally. Well, let us know when that happens because we want those because pictures. I have. I've been buying all kinds of shirts and stuff off of these places I've been selling shirts for us the last six weeks. I have one sitting at my store that I've been having employees and customers sign. And what I want to do is that I want to give that shirt to Adi himself when I see him signed by customers and employees, but I haven't seen Adi yet, so I don't, I'm not sure I'm going to give it to him. That's cool, though. That's very cool. That's a really cool thing. That's but a it unique says, gift for him. Adi T. Strong on the shirt, and I'm having people sign it for him. That's awesome. You're a good man, Dan. I'm glad you won. But We're all glad. You know, We're all sick, yeah. stickers for people that want stickers and shirts for people that want shirts, so... We want all that stuff. Yeah. We already got some stickers, actually. Yep, yep, some yep. market basket employees sent us some stickers. Those were awesome. I have them on my computer. ATD. ATD. That's right. I have, I'm, I have some that I just made the other day that's just uh, that's thanking the customers, too. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, I'll send you guys the picture of it in case you guys want one. I can send it out to you guys. We would love one, Dan. We would love yeah, it. Um, we can get you, you on the back end. You yeah, got my info. Selling. I sent yeah, it over to you. You got it. Yep, I got all your info, Mike. So I'll just send it to you, and then I get it to everyone else. How many people 
there with Warren Sicker, and I can send it to you guys. We got a good crew. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll talk offline, definitely. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, can you tell we're having a little bit of a party today, Dan T? Dan, uh, Dan the Man. Danny T. Danny T, Dan the, Dan T, the Man, Damula's Market Basket Man. So. Can you tell that we're having a party today? I can tell just by the way, like I said, I was listening to you and Frank before I called in. You guys were like, oh, happy about the weed. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, they're in a good mood today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're celebrating. We got our big festival coming up next week. We just did, you know, we're doing another big thing coming up in January. And Market Basket is back. We're just happy. We're very happy. And we're happy that we met you along the way, Dan, the man. Yeah, I met a lot of people over the last six weeks. It's, it's been crazy. My face has been getting blown up. My cell phone is getting blown up. With all these people, you know, want to be my friend, you know. Uh, good. Thanking me, for, thanking me for what I did for the last six weeks and stuff. Uh, I just can't believe all the the support that I've been getting. You're like a market basket rock star now, to me anyways. Pretty much, yeah. I can stick my neck out for six weeks and meet new people and talking to these people and stuff. It's just crazy. Let's hear it one more time. We got, we're got. we going to have to take a quick break and come back. We are the Young Jerks. We want to thank you again, Dan the Man, and congratulate you and all the Market Basket workers and all the customers for sticking the neck out, fighting for RDT, getting them back, getting back to work. I'll just, let's hear let's it for them. Let's give a hand of applause. A hand of Congratulations applause. Right. Thank you, Dan. That's right. Thank you, Dan. And thank good. you for thank you. reporting, too, on this show. Keeping in touch. Thank you, guys, for your, thank you guys for the last six weeks for your support. It's been amazing. Like I said, if I didn't meet you, Mike, I didn't know how I could get the word out there to people about Market Basket. But I met you, Mike, and ever since then, I've been on the radio station every week calling about Market Basket and telling people about it. So I personally want to thank you guys, the Young Jerks, and Smoker and the Girls Room for everything you guys done the last six weeks. It's been amazing. Oh, wow. Thank you, Dan, the man. Again, we we can't say it enough this week. We are celebrating and th- giving thanks. We're so grat. I have gratitude that uh, I met you and that you spoke with passion and you continue to be there and and even put the bug in my ear and say every week, Mike, we got to talk about Market Basket. This is important. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you to all the audience. And because I mean, we- everywhere we go now, you know, I'm thinking about the big fast next weekend, but everyone's still talking about Market Basket. They're like, congratulations on Market Basket. People are happy. A lot yeah, of weed people are saying that. Like people from other, me and Frank are involved in a lot of politics and activism and social movements. And people from all movements were behind Market Basket. And it's uh, it's not too often we get to get involved and see something happen. And even though it was six weeks and it did take a while, it did happen. And it's so glad that it happened for you, Dan. Yeah, that's a big talk now. Everyone's talking about Market Basket and what happened in the six weeks. That's a big topic now. Everyone's talking about everywhere I go. I hear people talking about market baskets. So those those six weeks is big and like I said, it's going across country and nationwide and now everyone's talking about what happened. Well, because of you, man, you know, and, and, and your colleagues and the customers, you know, maybe we'll be able to carry this on. But we're gonna take a break, brother. It was awesome having you on. Thank you so much for all your help, you know, and, and your information and your struggle. And uh enjoy your work, man. Thank you. All right, peace. We are the Young Jerks on WEMFradio.com. And behind the board, we got Dave Crespo. Hey, Dave. Hello, Dave, behind the glass back there. Yo. Yo, Yo. he's saying. <laughs> he's been probably at every festival. There's all This is still festival season and all sorts of things going, like Jamaica Plain Fest and uh, Boston Calling and the Boston Freedom Ride. He's probably been at like a bunch of them. I was just at so, JP Fest. That's, that's how did I all. know that? How did hmm. I know? And you also uh, have been doing your own shows, WEMF Radio, been doing some Middle East shows, shows everywhere, right, Dave? Yeah, I keep busy, especially so, here. You got a call coming in. You, you, we do. Oh, we do? We should take the call, but we should also go to music. Well, let's go to music. I'll what kind of music too. you got? You got. God. What'd you say? I said, well, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> oh, I gotta, have, we're partying today. I have uh, kind Mighty of mu- Mystic, Cali Green, because Mighty Mystic will be at the Freedom Rally next week. Ooh. Yeah, I like I the like sounds it. of that. I know them. I know him. Yeah, let's hear that. Yo, Mr. This is from the West is the best herb. Nothing more, nothing less from the Western. And we blaze Cali Green till we just hurt. It's the best herb from 
I know him. Yeah, let's hear that. WEMF Radio Now. We're, We're back. back. Live. Too high, young Oh, my God, Frankie. <laughs> I said we say we're hours. partying too way too much today. I still like that name. That's why we're the young jerks. Well, I like the name too, but I like the young jerks too. I like. I'm, I'm I didn't even actually it. say it though. I'm still young. You are. Yeah, you were saying it. I, I saw you. I, I just it. was. I was doing the scat man. You I've know? done it too though. Be ba 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 da boom, ba da boom. You know, ba da boom. <laughs> At any rate, so uh, Gruffy Gruff is here in the green room. Do you know who Gruffy Gruff is? I I met Gruffy Grufferson. Yeah, he's um, here. He's a cool. Yeah, he's cool. Maybe he'll talk to us later. You know he talks? He does? Yeah, he does. That's my dog. Yeah. He, in case not any... all dogs talk, but he does talk. My dog talks too much. He doesn't talk too much. He talks just the right amount. My dog's like, mine, 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 mine. No, he's just like, if you if he really needs something, he'll let you know. Or if he really loves you. He's an awesome dog. So, we're, <laughs> what are we doing? We're, we're all over the place. We've done too much weed today. Oh, weed is man. good. I think we're going to do more weed. Market basket is good. Market basket is good. Weed is good. Weed is good. The young jerks are good because we're getting presents and thanks everywhere from market basket employees, from the weed movement lately. Um, Boston Freedom Rally coming out both on both days. We're doing something Just full big. ticket. Yeah. You know, doing beautiful. something big for KLP, too. I'm planning at the Freedom Rally, and I think there's a lot of people... Also with the same expectation at the Freedom Rally, honoring KLP. Of course, of course. We had a big story uh, I wrote in Dig Boston about the Freedom Rally that's out right now. You should check that out at digboston.com. The uh, Boston Magazine story that came out, uh, quoting Jeff Lawrence, about New England Canacon that just came out yesterday. Unbelievable things going on in Boston. But now we're going to turn to more weed at a different place. Just to skip down the road. Yeah. Some people might not even know who we have on the show this week. I don't even think we... Uh... We didn't promote it that much. We didn't much. really promote it, but... Kind of uh, last-minute plug. It's a very, very special guest A here, good friend. Of, of a fellow compatriot. Who was here last year. That's right. At the Boston Freedom Rally. You may know him. Uh, from comedy. From Maybe the politics, panic, the, the panic hour. From being arrested. From being brutally assaulted in a viral video at, from Independence Hall. From his activism uh, in Philadelphia. What else for his show? Yeah, you said his show. I said his show. I'm sure we're missing a lot, like dick jokes and the you Illuminati. Have dick jokes in there. Um, he's friends with Kokesh of the Illuminati, maybe. I mean, <laughs> well, Mr. N.A. Paul, there's the yeah, laugh there. there. We made him laugh. N.A. Paul is a German. We can make a comedian laugh a little bit. We going all right. Hey, what, what's going on, dude? No, I do porn too. If you guys, uh, your listeners out there, when excellent. I, I didn't want to know that. Do you have sideburns on it. Yeah. Poe, I'm very yeah. conservative. Nice, I can't dude. see you in porn. Got to have the sideburns. Put, put the Italian stallion in X, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> now, how are you guys doing? Good? Well, awesome. Good, good, We're good, partying good. today. That's right. It's it's uh, it's a nice rainy day out here. We got the thunder rolling in the background. and uh, I thought it was still sunny out. I didn't even know. <laughs> That's how... It, that mic's in the zone. Yeah. But uh, you guys had some stuff go. going on down in Philly you today, know, right? You know, you know what I've noticed about marijuana? I haven't been able to smoke marijuana for nine months. And then I haven't smoked marijuana in six months. So I've noticed that stoners don't even realize how fucking stoned they are. <laughs> yeah, I, like, it's fucking bad, man. Like, I kind of, like, I, at first I was angry at everyone, you know, because everyone would get high all the time and I couldn't. And now I'm just like, you people are fucking high. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> I guess that's how people thought of me. But, uh, you know, I'm actually, I'm down to 99 days of uh, probation left. So oh, I'm that's really awesome. forward to that. Now, when you call yourself, when you put out a video and call yourself a marijuana addict, do you really mean that? Yeah. No, uh, you know, it's funny. I was just having a conversation today about someone talking about uh, how marijuana was in some way addictive, and I have to have all these, you know, ridiculous conversations all the time. But I think that if you run into someone that thinks that, it's our job as activists to let them know that, hey, man, that's, you know, that, that's not uh, the way that things are. So, yeah, we're actually working on a new show. The Panic Hour is putting together a... Um, 20 minute um, comedy show that's going to be uh, done with Scrapple TV, where it's going to be sketch comedy and news and all that. So, we're going to tackle some of those myths by doing, uh, you know, catching someone injecting the marijuana in their arm and, <laughs> and all that. So, trying to bring back, you know, I grew up on stuff like the state. And to be honest, a lot of the Boston comedy, you know, when I was a kid, man, like that shit changed my life, dude. You know, um, most of my inspiration came out, you know, Leary and those guys up there just were doing. Great work. I can remember being a 10, 11-year-old kid, you know, and just 
sitting upstairs while my family's eating dinner, listening to stuff like Leary and Kinnison and Dice Clay and all that shit. So um, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I need to get I need to get high. <laughs> uh, uh, but you almost you, yeah, you're proving it too though on the addict thing because uh, they call you an addict, but you you haven't smoked weed for months and months oh, yeah. and months. Yeah, they called me an addict. That's what we were saying. They and then you an addict, and I, I I went through outpatient rehab. I I, I went through three months of outpatient rehab. Dude, and, what's that uh, like? You know, and then I graduated, so I'm not a marijuana addict. Um, like, you know, what do they say to you in there? Like, what do they say to you? Like, whether they like, like, do you, do they make you do like the twelve steps for like for weed? Like, who did you harm? Well, like, it, it, was, it was actually kind of funny because they wouldn't put me in group therapy because they said because of my line of work that I would be distracting to people that really need real help. Okay, yeah. so that was ridiculous. And then I ended up in. Um, with a woman who actually was a 42 year old woman that was from the Ukraine and she escaped through Ukraine during some fucking Eastern European war or some shit. So like the first day she was like, you know, I understand, you know, you fight the government. The government is turning into fascism. We talk whatever you want. So I went and I took out my girlfriend for 12 weeks, <laughs> you know, and uh, we never even, it's funny the whole time. I mean, I kind of played it up online, you know, because I found that thing in her, office that said, you know, curing marijuana addiction. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, we actually had a lot, we had some, bull, we had a lot, some nice long bullshit sessions, and, uh, you know, on the government's dime, and then they gave me public transportation tokens, too, so that was nice. Oh, that is very nice of them, after all that uh, abuse that they put you through for smoking some weed and civil disobedience, yeah, I mean, it's, doing it's activism. Really ridiculous, the idea of marijuana addiction. I mean, obviously, a guy that smoked the amount of fucking marijuana that I did and be able to stop cold turkey. Now, it's really messing me up, because if I do psychedelics one more time this summer, I'm going to fucking go out of my mind, but in this probation, I'm going to be God. <laughs> so, a lot of acid, dude. So, <laughs> a lot of acid. <laughs> you're going all out. So, when, you know, a couple things. Because we want to get to today, definitely what you were involved in today. But uh, you can't come next week to the Boston Freedom Rally. Why not? Well, you know, the federal government said that Chris Goldstein and myself. Yeah. said that we cannot be in a situation where, you know, you guys up there are breaking the law and, you know, the breaking law is being encouraged. Um, you know, we can't be involved in that type of thing. And, you know, I reached out to some people, Mike being one of them, you know, that I respect. They're a little bit older than me, you know, um, respect my elders a little bit and reach out. And, you know, everyone said just put it on hold, you know, wait another year. But it does break my heart to not be able to to be involved in it. And then like the feds, you know, I didn't even say that I was going up for the Boston Freedom Rally. I said I was going to go to Boston for the weekend. And he came back to me and he, he put a, pulled a Facebook post up on me that said, I've been asked to speak at the Boston Freedom Rally. He's like, you're not going to this. Yeah. So, you know, that's so more, ridiculous. Uh, year. That's so ridiculous. Cause you know, the event is allowed legally. It's a legal event. You're professionally at being asked to speak. This is a uh, professional opportunity for you. I just don't get why they don't allow you. It's not like you're going up there to smoke weed. You're not. You 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 know would make that abundantly clear to your probation officer. I just think it's lame that they do this. That they don't allow someone like yourself because you got into trouble legally for you know non-violent civil disobedience to change a law. That now you're politically stifled. That you can't come up to the biggest event that you've been invited to speak at next week. I just it really aggravates me. I, I wanted you guys here, but. We're not going to harp on that. It is what it is, but you won't be here. So we want to hear some of your speech today that you would give, maybe. And also, nah. secondly, I also want to ask... You could, you could have talked to me about this before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you have a few things. But before I do that, too... No, uh, here's, before, here's, wait. Go, here's your Oscar. Right, go ahead, Fucking say go something. No, I was nominated. <laughs> um. But there's also something else, too. I also want to know, when can you come to Boston? Because we do have a big event that we're talking about in January. It's January 31st yeah, and I'm February. Yeah, I'm excited about the, Can the Canacon. I think that that's a great idea. I actually just did the Comic Con in Philadelphia, and it was wonderful. So I can't imagine, uh, you know, especially you guys are, you know, the pioneers on the East Coast. I mean, like, without Boston, you know, I mean, Boston's the shit. That's why, you know, I was really looking forward to coming up there because so many people from the get-go, I mean, you know, you guys particularly, you know, uh, allow me to write. I mean, you're, you know, writing in Dick Boston was the first time I ever knuckled down and, like, wrote an article. And since then, I've been you know, writing all the time. So, I mean, I'm always inspired by the shit that you guys do up there. And if I were to say anything from my speech, this would be it. We went to a fucking march today in Philadelphia, right? To Because our decrim bill is up on the 10th. 50 fucking people showed up, okay? You know, 
And, I, and, and you want to say the difference between me and Kokesh? This is the difference between me and Kokesh. Kokesh wants to watch people, wants people to watch him do shit. I am literally out there every day calling on people to get off of their fucking asses and come out and, like, help to create change. Yeah. And, and we just, then we do a march, and 50 people show up, man. I mean, you know, I got love for every one of those 50 people that came today, okay? But it's also... Really disappointing that, you know, so many people like to click the fucking like button and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes to actually getting out and, and, and you know, if we put, you know, five, six hundred people in the streets today, you know, then I think that people would have woke up and, uh, you know, said, hey, well, the people want this. We look like 50 stoners fucking stumbling down Market Street today. And, I mean, you know, people honk their horns and whatever the fuck. And, it, you know, it's a good thing. But, I mean, I busted my ass here, you know what I mean? Like, me and Chris work on the decriminalization. I mean, like, we had to go to a fucking city councilman. I mean, like, I sucked it up and worked within the system. Shit, I ran for fucking city council, you know? Yeah. So, like, we, you know, are working hard out here, and, you know, preaching to the choir is just getting a little bit old, and especially when the choir's fucking not listening half the time, you know? Yeah. The fucking stone. Yeah, the, the, yeah it's <laughs> true. So, the, you're so right. The choir half the time thinks, oh, we're already winning, we won. It's not won. It's it's like the battle is just beginning. We take two steps forward, one step back, even here in Boston. And look at the rest of the country. Look at what you're dealing with. I agree, NAPO. You're you're love you, man. I really do. I, I can't wait. Well, yeah. I, I just want people to I just want people to stand up for themselves. Like this idea, like of course, I'm a personality and I'm a comedian and of course I want people to pay attention to what I'm doing. But like I also like am doing this to like inspire. So like anytime that anyone like comes at me like I'm egomaniacal, which to be honest is rare, thank God. But, you know, like I'm doing everything that I do to try to make people, you know, stand up for themselves because like, you know, if you don't get into it, who's going to get into it? You know, you need, everyone needs to stand up and, and, and fight for the things, especially if they believe in them. What's it take to come down and make a fucking sign and march for an hour? I know. know. I just watched three, I just watched 3,000 people ride down, literally. This is, this is where America is. 3,000 people are riding around Philadelphia with their dicks out right now in the Philly Naked bike ride, and I got 50 people marching for marijuana decriminalization. So, I mean, I don't know if, hey, and I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for people riding with their dicks out, let's be honest. <laughs> um, you know, at the same time, you know, uh, mobilization has become a problem. And, 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 you know, Boston Freedom Rally is great because, like, you know, there's, like, a fun atmosphere to it. And, I mean, it's also, you know, definitely a fucking protest. I mean, when I started Smoke Down Prohibition, that was a model for that. And, you know, before I got arrested, you know, we were headed in that direction. Yeah, we were headed in the funnel cake direction, motherfucker. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I do, I do. <laughs> funnel cake. <laughs> you know? It's going to be delicious. And that's, you know, and that's what I wanted, man. You know, and then, like, you know, and, and I always... You know, put it, you know, I always like to think that the feather in our cap, that, you know, they came after us the way they did because they saw that it was going to turn into something where, you know, it was kind of revolutionary in a city, you know, based with this rich history. And, uh, you know, they shut it right down. But, you know, everyone wants to come out for shit like the Boston Freedom Rally and buy a fucking T-shirt and hang out and smoke a bone. Well, like, we need more people to really, you know, fight when we need them. And oh, it's so true. Issue. It's so true. And marijuana fucking reformers are all fighting amongst one another so goddamn much they don't know what's going on. I know, you know, you know, you know that's so true too. Like we we all focus in Boston. Oh, we got it so good in Boston, like you said. Oh, we'd, we're so far ahead in the East Coast in Boston. But you know what? That's the truth there too. Like Boston Freedom Rally, everyone comes out. Oh, I'm so part of it. I'm doing so much. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But then come Monday when I want to go to the state house and talk to these f's at the state house to actually change the law, there's five people there. You know, or even yeah, on the next Saturday. Hey, I under and I understand people have to work, but then you know, even when we do things on Saturday and Sunday, when you should have a moment every once in a while to do something, you're not there. So true. Or, or even email or phone calls. So much you could be doing. People don't do it, and then they yeah, blame well, us. I mean, and then the, 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 you know, Mayor Nutter here in Philly said, "Well, no one's coming up on, to me on the street and asking me about marijuana legalization," and it's like. Well, you know what? That's kind of the truth. It's like people, you know, it, and, and the Internet has just created this culture where, like, you make a video or you write an article and it gets shared around and then people think that they're actually doing something. And, you know, in actuality, like, it's not. Like, that is, like, a virtual world. And it's wonderful because I would have never met guys like you. You know what I mean? But you guys up there, I know you all don't get along. OK, but you also have all kind of put that in, uh, aside as reformers for the greater good to make sure the rally goes off right, to make sure that you put the, the correct pressure on things. You know, and we just don't have that in Philadelphia. I mean, a lot of times it's me and Chris Goldstein and, and my girlfriend, Rachel, you know, 
pushing like everything in the city. I mean, we pushed a decrim bill into their fucking laps. Yeah, and you got so far with it. You know, and, and the thing is about that too is if that doesn't say I'm a high school educated foul mouth Italian, okay, <laughs> a fucking a college student and and, and Goldstein's ass. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Three people pushing the city to to change the law, and you know we're this close to changing it, and it's like yo, we did all the work. You know, we're just asking you to be the fullback and help us push it over the fucking line. You know I know, I mean? it's and, so and you true. You can't even get any help there. I mean, I'm grateful for, the, grateful for all the people that follow my work, and it allows me to not have to do anything but this for a living, which is a dream for me, you know? And uh, But at the same time, Jesus Christ. I know. It's so true. I see it all the time. And then people, you know, then people get jealous of the people that have done the work, which is another infuriating thing. Like, because... Same thing in mass. There's so few of us. I don't have to even, you know, there's two or three of them. I, I don't even like these people, but you know what? They did work and they still do work. And if there was like two or three more of them, maybe we would get more done. Like there's not that many. There might be 10, 20 people that have done all this work in Massachusetts to change these laws. Seriously. But at the end of the so day, we come together people. and we do it. Yeah. And it's like, why can't we all do more? Stop asking what you can well, do and just pick something. What are you good at? Are you good at making graphics? Go make some graphics. Are you good at making dick jokes? Make some dick jokes about weed. That's what <laughs> N.A. Poe did. N.A. Poe, you have well, gifts. It's all about knowing your arms, too. It's like, yeah. you know, when, like, Mike Whiter, uh, which you guys probably know, is, I love a, him. is yeah. a combat veteran, right? Good we dude. have kids here that are having seizures. We have people with cancer. Like, my job was a bus ball to bang pots and pans in the street. I've done that work. I've done it to the point that I am being penalized federally for it. It's like, you know, I would never go speak in Harrisburg. I'm not trying to sit in front of a Senate committee. We need the people that, you know, have these ailments and the people that are going to tug the heartstrings. And I don't, you know, negatively towards any of those people. But the thing is, what do you want me to do? You want me to put my purple suit, Senator Fulmer, and bite my lip about Hmm. marijuana and try to hammer into these fucking old cocksuckers' heads that fucking people need medicine? Or that our country needs the money economically to fucking function. I mean, you know, I don't even know where we're getting these money to buy the bombs and to fund Israel. Where is that even coming from? Uh, it doesn't actually exist. <laughs> <laughs> I think we printed out of thin air. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous, you know. Uh, but I just like, you know, I just try to keep my head up and do as much work as I possibly can and have a good time. I mean, we covered the Philly Naked bike ride today. Hey, go out, have a good time, see people riding around naked. You know, and, you know, I do my part. And when I go to bed at night, you know, I know that. Yo, can I ask you guys a question about what the fuck is going on with this Boston calling thing with their shake, their, their shake down? Yeah. Well, one thing, Paul, 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 I got to tell you something, too. We, um, we, we now have like station rules. <laughs> I'm going to call you. We're not supposed to swear. <laughs> only, you've only done it like a hundred times. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, welcome. I, I, it took me a little while. But uh, no, I actually Pope. just saw that sign. Yeah, we're looking at it. I'm just like, man, I've never even seen that the sign Pope. before. I should have said that before. I mean, Pope. one or two is all right, but yeah. like that was, that was <laughs> a little. Uh, but it is an eight. Four. <laughs> it is an eight, Paul. Though, but Paul, um, we'll go, yeah, you want to know about Boston calling? That, Dig Boston, check it out. Dig Boston's all over that. Chris Farone and uh, there's that Mr. Lip. You know Mr. Lip? Who? What's his name? Kenneth so my, good friend, Ken, my good friend Ken Lip contributed to that too. He was yeah. my campaign manager. He's a great journalist. He, he contributed to that a little bit. We had a big from the files. We had a big Boston calling event again today, and uh, the first, the last one, there was facial recognition with the government doing some shady things in the city of Boston with IBM. Yeah, they were just, you know, no big deal, just kind of taking pictures of every single person's face and cataloging it. And, <laughs> you know, well, you know what? Like the way, it. like. It, it, what does it really matter, right? Because you're going into a fucking concert. If you have a bomb strapped to you, then maybe they found you. You know what I mean? That's a good thing. But, like, you know, the security state and the surveillance state is something that we, like, people think the future happens overnight. You know what I mean? And, like, it doesn't, man. It, it happens through like, this implementation process. So uh-huh. it's like they're feeling your balls at the airport. They're scanning your face at a fucking concert, you know? Uh-huh. And, like, the next thing you know, it's like fucking demolition, man. Fifteen years from now, and everyone goes, oh, how did this happen? I know. It happened because you let them You didn't pay this attention. And this and this and this and this, you know? and, and there's no disclosure. Like, that's the problem with this whole thing is they didn't tell us. It was all secret. It's like, it why was it a secret? Us. Yeah. It protects us from, it's like, come on. from terrorists. How about, how about some, uh, and then they, they were sloppy. I mean, they left it all over the internet, this top secret operation that they were doing. Ridiculous. Yeah, the cops are retarded when it comes to that shit, dude. Ken IBM. Went to like an international too. association of police chiefs 
thing, and, like, everyone that spoke left, like, all their notes. Now, granted, who the fuck wants cop notes other than my journalist friends? But exactly. at the same time, like, that's definitely who you don't want to have, your cop notes. Exactly. Like, the journalist. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. It's like they're so sloppy because they have all the power. And that's where we have to fight them. I mean, look what that did. You know, you you, you make that article, and now they they all got their fucking pants down. You know, yeah. and that's their fault. So and, fuck them. And there's a discussion about it. Is, let's have a discussion about how far we want to go with this stuff. And in and, and like the city of Cambridge, they put these cameras in, and they didn't allow them to turn them on after they took the grant. I mean, there's being just there is discussion in cities and towns, which is good on this stuff. The well, an, I think it was an IBM grant, right? Yeah, it was probably. A, it was, a, it was another a grant one, yeah. from a Homeland Security. Yeah, it was a Homeland Security grant that the tech. It was IBM technology, and then I'm just waiting for people to start finding those Stingray uh, cell phone, you know, well, uh, tappers all around the city. You, you know, the, 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 the new thing now is that anyone can get this equipment and spy on everyone's cell phones, and it is not just the NSA. NSA does it directly, but we're talking about mafia groups could do it. Um, and and this is what we think is going on: foreign government extortion, all uh, kinds extortion, of extortion, um, Hollywood. You never know. Uh, private intelligence groups, private detectives, Stratford. maybe someone doing. You know, anybody. Yeah, Alex this, Jones. Eight million. This is the problem in this country. There's eight million enemies. It's not just one. It's not just CIA or just the cops. So this, we're, we're facing multiple fronts. <laughs> And this is what we're up against. So, uh, and hey, I'm glad you're talking about this, but I got a couple more questions before we let you go today. Yeah. Number one, Canacon. We want you here. We already know that. In Boston, will you be able to uh, partake? Will you be back to your pot smoking ways? Will you, will, will you be I'm off? Gonna, of- I am going to be fucking disgustingly stoned human being. You might just have to just, like, put, sit me somewhere. Just we can it burnies like, you and just corner. have to pop you up. <laughs> you're not, you're not going to stay sober now when you get off probation? Well, Nicole? I'll, be, I'll be there, but I don't know if I'll necessarily be there. Yeah, um, yeah I'm super excited for that, and I definitely 100% will be up there, and I want to start being able to, uh, you know, I want to you know, bang some pots and pans again, so as much as I like being, like, a personality now in the reform community, I also... Uh, still want to keep my edge i mean smoke down prohibition is coming up on its two-year anniversary and it's only six days after i get off probation so <laughs> like, you know i have like that, I have like that constant like weight in my head you know what i mean it's <laughs> like uh, well uh you know but i don't know maybe we can bring it to city property because if my fucking decrim bill goes through correctly then uh It'll only be a twenty five dollar fine, so maybe I'll smoke down City Hall or something like That's that. That's a good idea against the mayor. That's totally you know, and especially if he doesn't. I mean, if he doesn't go through the decrim, take it to the city because he's the one you're facing now, Mayor Nutter. Let's uh, talk about him. Is is there any chance you think with this guy that he's going to back off and the city council and everybody, ACLU, the uh, you know. We we know this is a racist policy in Philadelphia. It's so like nationally they're talking about it, how racist it is in Philadelphia. We know that uh, marijuana policy there's a racial preference on arrests, but it's so borne out in Philly. You have the numbers. What are the numbers again on African American? The numbers are like it's like uh, I think uh, so rounding out like four K people arrested, like thirty two hundred were African American, and like some dude Chris Goldstein wrote an article the other day, and some dude who retired state trooper came out and said something like. Uh, well, you know, like, blacks are smoking marijuana on the corners. Like, white people were smart enough to, like, smoke it in their house. Racist. Yeah, you know what? Black people are fucking also getting stop and frisk. Yeah. They're getting fucking racially profiled. They're getting just, you know, shook the fuck down. And then if they can't have anything on them, you know, you know, they don't have any other reason. They lock them up for small amounts of marijuana. And, I mean, we all know where that whole thing leads. So, you know, in the town where we have a black mayor and a black DA and a black fucking police chief, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it showed Chris, Chris likes to say that it, it shows the institutionalized racism within the system that you can get three men of color that are pretty much running your city that don't stop a policy like that. It's like, unbelievable. You know, if, it's unbelievable. If, 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 Yo, Capone, if they were fucking doing that to Italians, you know me and you'd be out there. Oh, like, forget about Columbo. it. Yeah. Hey, I, I hear Mr. Cease like a break of thumbs. Yeah. And, you, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so unbelievable. I hope, I hope the work, I hope he finally gets a clue on this because he's got to look bad in his own community by, you know, continuing a racist policy. Because, you know, that guy that said, oh, black people are more likely to smoke on the street corner. 
you're an idiot. I know plenty of white and black people. And I'll tell you something. White people I know in my city are more likely to smoke weed in public. You know why? Because we know we're less likely to get harassed by the police because we're white. Let's be serious. This is That's the damn truth. I mean, that's the unfortunate reality of the situation. Black like, people are afraid you know, to do anything because of the police. I could smoke a joint walking down the street in Central Square. Cop right drive by also, and I'd wave at him, and you keep driving. Yeah. You know what I mean? So but let's if be a black real. person did the same thing, be like, oh, you're being wise? You're waving at me? Yeah. Yeah. And then he'd beat yeah, the I mean, shit out of them. Well, well, the thing is, if they don't pass it, you know, it, look, the, the, the city council can override uh, the mayor, you know, on this. And then what I want to do Good. is I want to see, so they say 90-day implementation policy, which is wow. bullshit, but I'll give them that. Okay. Okay. So that puts us in September, October, late November. Okay. You know, if if I get statistics in December that, you know, people are getting locked up for misdemeanor uh you know, pot charges, this fucking city going to get the fuck up. <laughs> but, it, but, you know, like, that's what, it, that's what it takes. I mean, and, you know, it's so hard to get people involved in the African-American community because they're so fucking scarred by all the arrests and, like, the harassment that, like, no one wants to stand up. I mean, a lot of times people in Philly are like, you guys are fucking white dudes. Like, shut the fuck up about, like, racial disparity. And, like, well, I mean, like, someone has to, like, talk about it, you know? Like, it, it, it's not a... I understand that it's not me, you know what I mean? And but the thing is, in a way, it is me because I took I took my medicine from that shit too. So, you know, we're just hoping that they implement it correctly. And if they don't, you know, uh, it's nice to have those cards in our pocket. You know, like literally, we got this passed, and we can kind of threaten them a little bit. Like, look, implement, you know, implement the policy. But then when I get fifty motherfuckers out in the street. <laughs> You know, <laughs> like what? Oh yeah, you assholes. Eighty six. You know? so, I mean, right, eighty six. What are you gonna do? I'm the hey, any like, the fucking stone. Eighty six. Eddie Fo, you need to smoke weed. I'm sorry. We gotta go. We our show is just about over. We have the young jerks. We counted eighty seven times. You said F. <laughs> this will be. This will go down as the young jerks. The most F words ever on WEMF radio. I am sorry, Kathy and Dad. Don't fire us. It's only an A We won't let him on the show again. <laughs> we love you, N.A. Right, Paul. Well, you are the man. We will see you in Boston soon. Thank you for calling yeah, in today. Yeah, January. I I think you guys go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that is you, N.A. Paul. He definitely is in the Illuminati. Dave Crespo is behind the board. I don't know if you heard that, Dave Crespo, but uh, that was that was funny. That was Oh, man. Well, how many times was it? Did uh, we really 88. get 88? I'm pretty sure it was around 88. Yeah, I think we got to 88. We got to count again, though. How many? If we'll someone can do that. We'll listen to it on the recount. We'll give you a big prize if you can if you can determine how many F-words and swears. Include the S-word. You know, all the... Uh, how many times? The S-word's a swear? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, what, what would count? Like We need if, a list of words. If we're, if we're on official radio, how many... You know, what song... What, what words would get us in trouble? Um, How many different times would we need to bleep that show today, Dave um, Crespo? Uh, the, you probably got about, like, 62. He kept going, though. Like Only you, 62? You, you stepped out to deal with smoking in the girls' room. He kept going. Like, we, I, at I, the I, end, it was like we couldn't... We, we had to tell him that we were counting. It was unbelievable, Crespo. Unbelievable. I'm pretty I sh- just appreciate that you said something. <laughs> I had to. Be, because it was like... I don't want to it's, it's funny because that dude just, like, can't... He can't. He's no, he, he, he <laughs> can't. He can't. He's an APO. It's like he's a stand-up comedian. It's like asking Richard Pryor to come on and not use... You know, he had that whole thing with the N-word. He he used it. He, he stood by it. Then he didn't. You know, it was, it's like yeah. any APO. I'm, just su- I'm really surprised that I've never swore on the show. I have. By I'm. I'm. Su- I have the same feeling about other shows because uh, I say the f word like every four words. It's tough. And like if we- W E M F Radio Now.